Oh my gosh. What are you doing? I love you so much. Okay, bye. Hey guys, it's Jasmine, and today I wanted to show you how to make a really potent and effective flu killer drink. All of the things we're going to use today aren't like crazy, hard to find, super foo-foo supplements or anything like that. They're very inexpensive and really easy to find, whether it's at the grocery store or corner store or farmer's market or whatever. Not only does it help to prevent potentially getting very, very sick with the flu or even just common colds if you're feeling like you're coming down with something, but if you are already sick, having this will help you beat it faster and it will help you through natural means. So all you need are six ingredients. That's not including water, which you will need water and an optional seventh ingredient, which as well is super easy to find. It's just up to you if you want to add it or not for additional anti-inflammatory and healing properties. So I'm going to make two servings today, which I'll explain more how to drink this once we're done making it. For two servings, all you're going to need is two lemons, any kind of lemons will do, preferably larger lemons. You're going to need fresh ginger root and you'll need about one to two inches per serving, so we'll probably use about a third of this giant ginger root. You're also going to need four cloves of garlic for two servings. I use two cloves per serving, which I think is a little bit more if you may have seen a similar recipe elsewhere, but I like to use a little bit more garlic because it really does increase the effectiveness of this recipe. And it's not a huge deal. If your stomach is really sensitive to raw garlic, feel free to just use one clove per serving. So to make two servings, you would just use two giant cloves. You're also going to need organic raw unfiltered apple cider vinegar and you want to make sure that it has the sediment at the bottom which is called the mother and make sure to shake that up really really well before you use it in the recipe you're also going to need a high quality raw honey i prefer and use manuka honey but if you can find a local honey to where you live usually available at farmers markets or smaller health food stores or some supermarkets i do suggest seeking that out and finding that kind of local honey because not only is it more beneficial in this recipe but it's good to have in the house if you struggle with allergies or different kind of pollen type issues. You are also going to need ground cayenne pepper or ground red pepper. And we just use a pinch in this recipe, but that also depends on how much you can tolerate. And that optional additional ingredient is ground turmeric, which if you have it, definitely add a little bit because it adds this anti-inflammatory punch and it just brings this recipe up another notch. And you can definitely drink this out of whatever tea mugs or anything that you have. But what I like to do is put it in mason jars. So you can use these little mason jars or you can use a larger mason jar like this one, which I have water that we are going to use to make this recipe. Now I'm going to make this recipe using my Vitamix, but if you don't have a high power blender, which makes it super duper fast and easy, especially if you want to make like four or six servings at once, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a cutting board. Actually, you're gonna need a cutting board regardless, to be honest. You're also going to need just a simple spoon and I'll show you what we use it for in just a minute. You'll definitely need a good, sharp knife. It does help if you have a juicer type thing like this. Also, if you have a good garlic press would be super beneficial. And having some kind of microplane grater or narrow grater like this one is super helpful for the ginger. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is smash the garlic to make taking the skins off easy. And you can either do that by gently pressing down like I just did, or that's a little more fun. So then what you would do, I have a blender, so I'm just gonna toss two of them in the blender. If you don't have a blender, you would simply either use your garlic press by putting both cloves in here and pressing it straight into the jar. Or if you don't even have a garlic press, you just finely mince up the cloves and put them straight into the jar as well. Next, we are going to cut a chunk off of this garlic root. <laughs> Did I say garlic root? Obviously I meant ginger root. And we're gonna use about that much. And the best way to peel ginger root is with the back of a spoon. That's why you're gonna need this anyway. And all you do is just take the back of the spoon and look at how easy that is. You just 
kind of peel off that really thin skin. And this is the best way to do it because if you are to use a knife, you would take off a lot of the good root on the inside and we want that. And if you leave a little bit, I mean, some you can even eat the skin to be honest, it's not that bad but I just prefer to do it this way. Again, if you don't have a high power blender, then you would use your grater and you would grate this right here onto your cutting board and then you would split whatever is grated out in two and put it in your two mugs. But since I do have a high speed blender, I'm just gonna give this a rough little chop just to help it out into little chunks and I'm gonna throw it in the blender. Next, we are going to tackle the lemons. Some people just prefer to cut the lemon in half and squeeze the juice into either the jar or their blender. But what I like to do is simply peel off the skin, leaving a little bit of the white pith and put the entire lemon into the blender. So you can either do this and get some pretty decent lemon zest or you can just use your knife and very carefully cut the skin off. You could just throw it in their hole or I'm gonna cut it in half because I like to help my blender because I'm weird like that. Chop it up, pick out the seeds if you find any and throw it in the blender. And if you miss any seeds, it's not a big deal because these high power blenders absolutely pulverize everything. Next, you are going to add a pinch of cayenne pepper or ground red pepper and you can see that's kind of generous but we can handle spicy food up in this house so you want to add a pinch of that however much you can handle i'm also going to add this optional ingredient of ground turmeric not much just a little bit and you can see there's no real neurotic measuring going on it's just how much you think you can handle and you just put it in the blender or your mugs just need a heavy handed splash of apple cider vinegar, a hefty teaspoon of honey, about that much for two servings. This is about two cups of water and we're just going to pour this water in here, shut it and blend. And that took maybe 20 seconds, 20, 30 seconds. I'll move this aside to show you guys. Uh, oh no, oh my god, that would have been bad. Okay, so we are going to bring our two little glasses here, and then you just want to split this into both of these glasses. So whenever you're ready to drink these, you can simply add boiled water to top this off, then put the lids on tight with that boiled water, and you would just shake them up really, really well and then you would just drink up. If you're not gonna drink these right away, then you would simply close the lids on super duper tight and put them in the fridge. And once you're ready to drink them, you would add the boiled water and drink it up. Now, they look really yellow now, almost like a, I mean, like a deep, thick lemonade, but a lot of that is because I added the turmeric. So if you don't add that turmeric, they might be a little bit more translucent when it comes to the how the liquid actually looks. And of course, if you don't have the blender and you're chopping everything up by hand or using the garlic press, then again, it won't be as even throughout and you'll have more chunks in the bottom, but it's really important to drink those chunks down. Something else you can do is heat this up in a saucepan on its own, adding a little bit of water, or you can even add some vegetable broth and then just put it in a bowl and add some chopped scallions or something to the top. And that may actually make this more palatable if some people just have a hard time drinking things that are more savory. And for anybody who doesn't eat animal-based products and doesn't want to include the honey, for example, you can just add a little bit of maple syrup or even blend a date in with this in the blender or two dates for two servings and that will add that little bit of sweetness while still giving you the effect and the benefit that the drink has. If you are already in the grips of the flu or a really bad cold or sickness you'll probably notice that your appetite is nearly non-existent and that's because when your body is trying to fight something off it takes a lot of energy and digestion is one of the 
functions in your body that takes the most energy. So if your body is trying to fight off an infection or a cold or the flu or some kind of bacteria, then it's not going to want to put that extra energy towards digestion and therefore your appetite kind of goes down. So that's why fluids, which are super important to maintain, and drinks like this one, which are packed full of anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, flu fighting, cold fighting, bacteria fighting compounds, that's why this is really beneficial. So if you are in the dire grips of your sickness, then I would suggest making a batch of at least six servings and drinking at least three or four a day for a couple of days or until you feel better. If you're in the house or working with people who are coming down with a lot of stuff, having one of these every night before bed or even during your lunchtime will definitely help nourish your body in order to prevent potentially getting sick. Now, I also do have a recipe for a vitamin C packed immunity boost smoothie, which I will link up in that eye icon in the corner and I'll also link it in the description below so make sure to check that out and even have something like that once a day to prevent getting sick or once you start feeling better to ease back into whole foods adding something like that smoothie could be really beneficial and of course I think it's worth mentioning because a lot of people don't seem to mention it but a lot of these foods with the highest benefit to either heal or prevent sickness or germs or disease from, from getting you sick, a lot of them are very potent in odor and in smell and oftentimes that can seep through your pores and of course that's not the most ideal scenario for a lot of people especially if you work in close quarters with others especially if you sweat a lot like if you go to the gym you can always tell when somebody's say i don't know i can always tell when somebody has had like a sub full of onions or something for lunch and then they work out at the gym that night because it's just it's coming out of their pores so something i thought would be useful or worth mentioning to you guys. First of all, if it's getting you over something like influenza, which is very, very bad this year, and a lot of supposedly otherwise healthy children and young adults and, and adults in general have died already, I think smelling a little garlicky for a few days is kind of worth saving your life. But that said, if you want to potentially combat that a little bit or maybe cut the harshness of it, you can try drinking a chlorophyll liquid in the mornings with water, just a tablespoon in a big glass of water is said to be an internal deodorizer and help with that. You can also get parsley based kind of internal breath tablets, which are these tiny little tablets that you swallow, you don't even need water. And those may also help to combat the odors and things that foods like garlic and onion could cause to come out of your system. And like everything else I mentioned in this video today, I will link everything I talked about in the description below. In the next couple of weeks, I'm also going to be putting out a couple more videos in regards to tips for preventing getting the flu or to heal quicker if you have the flu and how to sleep better if you're sick. So make sure to click that subscribe button below if you want to get these videos. I also put out a video every catter day about cat stuff and then tapping Tuesday for your stress management relief. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful or if you tried this out and also leave me a comment down below if you did try this or if you have any questions, I'd love to hear how it worked out for you. And if you happen to be interested in learning more about healthy eating, healthy lifestyle, I do have my grocery store tour guide book and my holistic fitness starter guide. You can find these at any bookstore or I will link them down below as well because they are available on Amazon. All that being said, I hope you guys stay healthy and take care of yourselves, especially during this crazy flu season. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.